But really, for some aging, thinning hair, this is pretty good. So I think I will begin with the makeup. My morning routine is very simple. I basically rely on very simple cosmetics, mainly my Nivea, my Bio Oil Gel, and uh, Vaseline, and a few other little things, maybe some vitamin C every once in a while. And before I put my makeup on, I'll put a little bit of bio oil gel on my face. It does just help with putting makeup on. Just a little bit because I already have Nivea on, so I don't need much else. But it does help the makeup to just glide on. I pull it down over my neck and a little bit on my decollete. I am going to begin with my Wet n Wild Dewy photo finish and the shade is soft beige and I do have these um, Jersey Shore sunspots on my cheek so that's the first thing I want to do a couple of little dots not a lot you know this uh, liquid foundation goes a long way and I just love it just a little bit here and there use my fingers I don't use brushes and basically just rub it in then I have these two sticks that I do get on Amazon and they're contour sticks. And I will list all of this. On one end, you have a nice little brush and on the other end is the contour. This is the darker one and I'm going to put that on my cheeks now. I don't do it under my chin, just basically on my cheeks. That's it. And that's all I use. By the way, these uh, little contour sticks that come in a pair are, um, I get them on Amazon and they're only about $11. I've ordered them several times over because this is basically all I use to contour my face, the darker one and the lighter one. And I will list these for you too. Now this particular one is sort of a lighter highlighter. And sometimes, I forgot to put this on before my highlighter, sometimes I will put a little bit up there. And if I feel I need some brightness under the eyes, I will do this up here. And this I would do after I put the foundation on, mainly because maybe a little here and there. Now, that's sort of on top of my other one. Now, you want to blend it. And the reason I put it under the eyes is it's always nice to have a little bit of a, um, a brightness under your eyes. And of course, you know me, I do love my shine. So I would do that before my highlighter. So just remember that. Love. And this is my L'Oreal Infallible Highlighter or my glow stick as I call it. And the color is Slay Rose. Now, I will put a little bit here, down the nose, on the chin, and definitely up the cheeks, going up. Wait a minute, too, mainly to let it. Now you rub it in, get that little thing here. I do love a little bit of glow on the nose. I think now I'll put my lipstick on because I do like to put my highlighter on top of my lipstick. Now my lipstick is as you can see, quite dark. It's Revlon, I'll hold it here, maybe that's a bit too close. It's Revlon Iced Amethyst, and it's, that has a, a blue tint to it. I, I do prefer darker lipsticks. And then, this is my, my fave number one. I have two other faves, a red and a copper. And now, just to sort of kill the, the dark 
color. I do take my Slay in Rose Infallible Highlighter and go over it. You see how it sort of cuts the, um, it cuts the dark color a bit and gives it a shine. And then while I still have some lipstick on my highlighter, that's when I go up on the cheeks a little bit to add a little bit of rosiness and it gets the uh, it gets the highlighter clean as well. Now I will wipe that off before I go on again. And then blend, bringing the color down just a little bit. So we're getting someplace now, aren't we? And now I think it's probably time for the eyes. I do have a stick. I believe it's a Maybelline eyebrow and um, under eye stick. I don't do any um, wet lines or anything like that on my, my eyes. I don't like too harsh a look, but I do want my eyes to pop because they are pale and they don't really show up unless I do things. Now, I have lost a little bit of hair in the middle of my eyebrows. Now, for some reason or other, my eyebrows did not change colors. They're sort of a dirty blonde. <laughs> and I thought maybe they'd turn white. I do try and just touch the tips to get a little bit of eyelash showing. I actually do have under eye eyelashes, but they don't show. As you can see, it's a very simple, simple routine. I have all these pretty little brushes that I don't use, and I would love to. These flood, they're so feminine to be able to do this type of thing, right? You may, this is all part of the the fun and beauty of makeup. There, now I feel all done up. I think, I think I've done everything. I don't think I've missed anything. But now, I'm going to begin the hair now because I think my face is on. I probably should have done some cupy lips or something maybe to go along with the hair, but I think this is good. Now, first I'm going to share with you some of the aids hair aids, I should say, that I'm going to use with this hairdo. As you know, I do have some side combs that I will put here and here to help bring that roll out. And these I love, I use often, and I love the fact that they're in white. Many of these things I can't get in white. I do have a big, big round one here, which the real Victorian or Gibson girl hairdo, after you pull all the rolls of the front of your face and you get the big roll in the back with this, and this I love, I've had it for years, but I can't find it in white. And what it does is it goes around your head and down in the back to form the roll in the back, as you can see, but the hair of course will come over it. Now, <laughs> I am definitely, ooh, now that did unleash some hair here. So I will use this for the back roll. And, and then after you get all your hair pulled into the center from the back roll and the front roll, you need a big bunch of your hair if you have a lot of hair. The Victorian women had tons of hair. And they what they did was they took the rest of their hair and whether it was curled or what, but they twirled it in a big thing in the back and and that's, they filled in that area in the back of the head. Now, I have just brushed my hair out, as you can see, and I was about ready to put the curlers in when I wanted to show you what I had here. Now, now it doesn't look so good. 
by the way, these combs, I have two of them. When you buy them on Amazon, they come in pairs. And as you can tell, these are curved and they're tortoiseshell. Uh, they have about 13 nice teeth. And I use this constantly for my updo. I have had trouble trying to find, I'm going to put my hair back for a minute. I've had a lot of trouble trying to find hair that matches my hair. My hair is white, but instead of having that white silver gray look, like so many of these that I've bought, it's more like, almost like the blonde that I used to be. So I might put this in the middle in the back. Now in here, <laughs> These are two big, long pieces that I bought once. Wrong color again. I have a lot of wrong color hair. And I might make my own roll from these big braids. This I had braided as well as this. And I might just get a piece of a, maybe a knee-high white stocking or something, stuff it with this hair, and I will have one of these to be able to do because my hair, I'm worried that it might not cover these rolls. So these things, when you buy them, they're so cheap on Amazon. But if I can't get the right color, then I might as well use them as stuffing for some kinds of these um, hair aids. First step in this hairdo is to pull out some of the front hair as you put this piece on. Now you want to have your enough hair in the front to be able to roll back, but you want to leave on the other hand, don't worry about this area of your hair right now, because you want to leave something in here where you're going to put one of those hair pieces. But the first step, and what I have here to help me is a package of white bobby pins, and they're fairly long, and these will help to pull the hair up and over. I'm going to pull back hair up and over and secure it with some of these pins. As you go across, now these won't show because you're going to have hair. You wanna keep it nice and low. Word and that they're all up with the help of the bobby pins. Okay, you can see the roll. Now, I would start by pulling some of my sides in. And now I'm starting in the front. Now it's a problem with the color because you see, I think I will take this comb and put it here in the front because all that's there is an elastic. So now I have a bump here and two on the sides and I'm trying to start put, pulling it back. This is one of those, um, those rings in the middle, but I don't have to do it that way. So, Normally, you would see their rolls bigger. I have a little something showing here. This is where sparse hair starts to show up. <laughs> the Victorian ladies' hairdos were done in a much more... Well, they had ladies to do it for them, didn't they? Let's pull this closer and see. Up, oh, I see the brown on the side. Yep. I'm going to have to make a white one of these, but the front doesn't look bad, does it? No, the front and sides look okay, but the white, but the back, where was that? Right here. I'm, oh, I can cover that up. Yeah. I will show you some of the lace pieces that I've been digging out from my, um, uh, buckets and buckets and tubs and tubs of laces and linens left over from my shop and my lifelong collecting at thrift shops of laces too. That's where you can find them. So if you want to do something like this, you can go to a thrift shop and look for 
um, dresser scarves or certain things that have lace on the edge, you cut them off and then I just hand sewed them around the bottom. How's that? I think that might be it. Oops. <laughs> I wish I had ladies in waiting. That would be good. <laughs> Maybe the next time I do this hairdo. I can have one of my daughters help with it. But can you imagine it would look a lot better if it was all white? So I did fix it a bit. So... I think I'll go back into my um, area in the living dining area. And I thought that this made this look a little bit more Victorian. Well, this is the finished hairdo. It's not quite perfect, but it's the first time I've actually done this with some of these aids. I so wish that I had one my big roll in the back in white, but I think I'm going to make one. And I would like these rolls to be a bit bigger and something like that. So I'm going to show you some of the laces from my collection. A lot of you have asked about those. I did have a shop and a national catalog business back in the late 80s, early 90s. My cameo is um, a thrifted piece also. Isn't that pretty? I did get that several years ago and I love that. So in 1902, a man by the name of Charles Dana Gibson sketched an imaginary woman with a hairdo similar to this, only much more exaggerated, all rolls back front and back with curls in the middle. And he, he typified this woman to be the modern woman of the turn of the century and she was to be characteristic of um, a, a liberated woman. <laughs> we know that was a little bit different in those days. However, uh, they had so much hair, those Victorian ladies and long, that they probably didn't have to use too many aids. But this is where all these uh, so-called rats and hair poofs developed in those days. In those days, they made them their own. They made their own rats from hair and they wrapped it in um, netting and it, everything. And they used a lot of hair aids to make these elaborate hairdos. I'm going to tell you about where I got this beautiful satin silky peignoir and matching negligee. The negligee itself is just basically a little tiny spaghetti strap, just, just what you would expect, very plain. But but I love the negligee because it is down to the calf. And so so is the nightgown. Nightgown's a bit shorter. And the color is so back in the day. They had it in a pink too, but I thought the pink was a little bit brighter. Several colors. But I ordered it on Amazon and I knew ahead of time that I was going to add some of my antique lace on the sleeves, which I think is beautiful. And this is a... Um, um, sort of a, a coffee tea color. Now it's very, very old and it's beautiful antique crochet. And I sewed it last night at 1.30 in the morning by hand while I was awake. And it's sewn by hand just on here. There's a little bit missing. It didn't have quite enough to go around on each sleeve, but I'll find something to fill in or maybe it doesn't really matter. But I think that it does give the, the peignoir a a vibe of, of a Victorian vibe. So I ordered this on Amazon and believe it or not, I only paid $17.99 for both pieces. This has to be one of my best Amazon coups. And I'm sure <laughs> I, if you want something like this and it's, it's part of fairy tale living. I'm sure I won't um, prance around in this very much in the house because as it starts to get cooler, you're going to find me in my Walmart, um, my fancy jammies, which I will wear. But but I I always did have a little bit of um, the fantasy, the fairyland 
the fairy tale living in my head. And this does fulfill that, especially with the lace on the sleeves. Now, if you want, if you don't have lace, go to thrift shops and pick up some of those beautiful uh, dressing scarves. You can find this with um, all kinds of beautiful lace, a lot of old, um, a lot of old crochet lace, which is what this is. And, and I have collected laces and scarves and pillowcases with beautiful colored embroidery on them for all my married life, believe it or not. I am probably a person that was born in the wrong century. And it does give a touch of romance to your house. I have lace curtains all over and uh, lace on the beds and antique quilts and patchwork quilts. And let me show you some of the things in my little collection. I have lace like this. Pieces like this that I adore. Now, you know, women in the old days used to spend time doing this all the time because it wasn't television and all these other uh, things to take us away from some of the beautiful things in life. And women and little girls were taught how to do lace making and crocheting from a very young age. They would sit at their mother's knee and watch them do all this handwork and knit work and, um, and do it themselves. I remember my brother when he went to Ireland about 10 years ago on a trip with his wife, I wanted a certain kind of an Irish lace and he actually did this for me, my sweet brother. And he went to a convent, I forget the county in Ireland, met the nuns, they took him inside, and he bought me a beautiful piece that I had framed in a little table under glass. And I think he paid an arm and a leg for it, but it was all hand done by, by the nuns. And that was the sweetest thing for him to do for me, really. I'm sure he went way out of his way to do that. Look at some of these pieces. Now, some of these obviously were taken off dressers and things. I did one time find a lot of these. I think there were quite a few. Someone who had started to do a quilt and never finished it. And I have so many of these all done. A lot of them too, I think were, where's my glasses? A lot of these were uh, hand done too. If I didn't have a lot of other things to do, in fact, in my day, I did spend quite a bit of time doing handiwork. I did all of it, loved it. My mother taught me how to do everything, my wonderful mother. And um, I don't do too much of it anymore. I, ha I do have to make four more Christmas stockings though. So I'll film that when we get to it too. This is a collar, isn't this beautiful? A little collar that women used to do these, put these on their, dresses or whatever. Look at all these beautiful pieces. This is gorgeous. I love this lace too. Some of it is just so fine and beautiful. And I do love the look at these pieces. Now you, you wonder at what point this was used in a dress or is it a dresser scarf or what? This piece is very old. Little pieces. Look at this. I have different colors of lace too. I do love the the uh, champagne colored lace. Anyway, this is just so much of what I have to trim things with. And if you look at these beautiful pieces, oh, I'm, I'm getting carried away here. This was a set called um, Anti Macasters, and they were put on the backs of chairs so that, and on the arms so that. Uh, men in the Victorian days and turn of the century had uh, grease in their hair a lot. They would put Vaseline in their hair, not wash their hair much. And if they leaned back, look at these pieces. Aren't these gorgeous? This is, this is a beautiful piece of lace. And then they had them for the arms of the chairs too. This was a set. These, are, these are, were on the arms of the chairs. Now, I would want to preserve the lace more than the chair, I think, at this point. Anyway, look at the sweet little collars for little girls. I did make a lot of little dresses and use these beautiful doilies, of course, made out of all kinds of stuff. I could go on and on. I have a pile here that 
you would enjoy. Maybe I'll make a dedicated one someday of some of the laces. This will be pretty, wouldn't it, on a dress, a black velvet dress or something. I think I was definitely born in the wrong century, that's for sure. But it's okay. Traditional, I think they call this turkey red. And this is a pillowcase. I know I had some made in Germany. Guten Morgen, is that more good morning? But isn't this a beautiful one? This is a pillow topper, I think. Oh, well, anyway, I think that's the scoop here. <laughs> I've put on some makeup for you. So for those of you who've been asking for, I will list all my products and my makeup in the show more. So I hope you run out and get one of these Penoir Negligee sets for $17.99 on Amazon. I will list this too. And go to a thrift shop and find some dresser scarves or something with this that has some beautiful lace on it. And get back to some of the creative things that the Victorian ladies did. You know, our world gets too busy with the modern. Um, we probably watch too much TV. We're on our cells too much. So I hope you've enjoyed this video of makeup, hair, and lace. And something of the Victorian era of which I wish I was a part sometimes. And even though it didn't turn out as perfect as it could be, I think one of these days I'm going to make my own rat of my own, um, some of those braids, so that since I do have thinning, aging hair, I think um, that I, by the way, I do use normally a lot of dry shampoo, which I did not put in this time. Maybe I should have. just have to keep showing my my lovely lace here. So I was born in the wrong century, that's for sure, wasn't I? <laughs> Bye for now. I love you all. Thank you. And God bless us all.